India's two premier universities run by the government recently received a show cause notice. It was from the Director General of Goods and Services Tax demanding IIT Delhi to pay 120 crore rupees for GST along with a penalty for research funding received between 2017 and 2022. Similarly, Tamil Nadu's Anna University was asked to pay 36 crore rupees on this account. Reports suggest that several other educational institutions, including central universities, renowned IITs and even state-run and private universities, have also been issued similar notices by GST authorities. This has sparked outrage from the education fraternity as they argue it compounds the already challenging issue of funding for research grants. As educationist Nedin Jalian puts it, Instead of using education cess funds, the union government is now targeting research grants with GST. This is a harmful move. Around the world, renowned institutions support research because it drives a country's development. With this, India is setting a poor example. In 2022, the BJP-led government dropped a bombshell on technical studies. It hiked the GST rates on scientific equipment from 5% to 12 to 18%. This caused a massive outcry from the scientific community as it directly cuts into research funds available for lab expenses by 6 to 12%. Now, with the latest notice, GST isn't just limited to equipment but extends to the entire research grant. This means everything covered by this grant, salaries, operational costs and more could be taxed. The Tamil Nadu government is challenging this decision and plans to move the court. They also contend that research grants given to state-run universities should not be taxed. The issue of funding has long been a concern. For example, during India March for Science in 2017, Students protested against cuts in research funding, delayed stipends and cancellations of fellowships, among other issues. Take the non-net fellowships for example. Introduced in 2006, these fellowships have been stuck at 8,000 rupees per month since 2012. Meanwhile, funding for key agencies like the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, the Department of Science and Technology, the Department of Biotechnology, the Ministry of Earth Sciences and the Indian Council of Medical Research has seen only a 2 to 4 percent increase in recent years, which experts say is grossly insufficient to meet the growing needs of the educational sector. Remember, India's researcher to population ratio already remains low with only 255 researchers per million people in 2017 compared to 8,342 in Israel and 7,498 in South Korea. And we are competing in an era which sees remarkable scientific advancement. To top it all off, the latest union budget slashed the allocation for the University Grants Commission by 61%. Universities have been forced to take huge loans from the government-run Higher Education Financing Agency to manage their affairs, a situation that prevails for long. The reduction in financial support for publicly funded university ultimately puts the burden on students and research scholars by hiking the fees. The 2017 protests highlighted these issues and now the GST demands only added to these financial strains, raising the stakes even higher.